Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Penny and this is Little by Little. In this video I'm making the last official piece for the living room of the homestead house. That means we only have one more room to go and that's the porch. Now if you've spent time here you know I like to start these videos with a story. So here goes. Between 1913 and 1935 my grandparents had 10 children. So there were kids in the house from 1913 until probably 1952 or 53. And they raised those kids in this tiny little house. Now, if you can imagine having 10 children underfoot in that tiny little house where there's no modern conveniences, there's no TV, there's no electricity, nothing. Add on to that the winters in Saskatchewan, which were no joke, and you couldn't even send the kids out to play. So they had to come up with a way to keep the kids entertained. And the way they did that was with music. Now my grandfather was very musical and he managed to get his hands on a bunch of different instruments. They had a couple of guitars, a banjo, a fiddle, an accordion, even a clarinet. And he taught all 10 of his children to play something. In fact, a few of them played multiple instruments. And they learned to play those instruments by ear because there was no sheet music available back then. At one point, they even took their show on the road and the Springer family band played for weddings, country dances, and other social occasions in and around the community. Later on, after they were all grown and I was a kid, every Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving that we got together, my dad and his siblings would pull out their instruments and they would spend the whole day laughing and singing and playing their instruments and just having a great time. So I decided that the Homestead House wouldn't be the same and couldn't be complete without the music. So in this video, I'm creating Uncle Alex banjo in miniature form. I hope you like it. There's not much for cutting instructions with this video, um, but I'll put them in the description below. We'll have a quick peek at the materials and the tools that you'll need, and then we'll get started. For the banjo, I use the following materials and tools. So I have two different widths of plywood here. I have a 3 32nd of an inch as well as a 1 16th of an inch. You need a very small piece of each. I've also got three different colors of cardstock. I've got an off-white, I've got a beige, and I've got a soft gray color. For the metal piece on the original banjo, I'm going to be using these metallic sheets that I found at the dollar store. Now these have an adhesive backing on them, but in all honesty, that adhesive is not very strong. So you're going to want to glue that down anyway. For my glue, I have a few different kinds because there's a few different mediums that are gonna to go together. I have my Mod Podge for the majority of the cardstock. I have a little bit of a glue stick. I have my wood glue. And then I also have this diamond glaze uh, dimensional adhesive. I find this works really well if you're trying to glue metal, which there are a lot of little tiny metal pieces on this banjo, and it dries perfectly clear, which is awesome. I have a selection of paint that I've chosen, and I've you can obviously paint yours whatever color you want, um, but I am trying to match the original banjo, and so those are the colors that I've chosen. You'll need some round toothpicks, some stick pins. We're just going to cut the heads off of those pins. Um, you'll need something to drill a hole um, where your tuning pegs will go. So I have this little hand drill, but whatever you have um, to poke a hole through will be fine. Um, some scissors. I have my uh, wire cutting pliers, paintbrush for the paint, obviously, and a pencil, my X-Acto knife, a ruler, and then I also have, of course, my reference picture um, to go off of so that we get all the details right. All right, let's get started on making this banjo. Our family. So I was able to take some good measurements of the banjo, as well as some great pictures of the tiny details for the banjo. Now I drew it out while I was measuring it. Obviously, this is way too large for a miniature scale. And so now I'm just going to downsize this so that it is 1 12th scale for the miniature. So I've drawn it out again on another piece of graph paper. And I'm going to use this drawing to make some templates. 
So this inner circle here, which is where the skin went over top of the banjo, that's one inch in diameter. And then there was a second layer down at the bottom of the banjo, which was a little bit wider, and I'm going to cut that at one and a quarter inches. The neck of the banjo in total, including the top piece where you would tune the banjo, um, will be 1.58 inches in length. And then this top piece of that 1.58, this top piece is 3 eighths of an inch. I'm going to start cutting out some of these pieces onto some wood. So what we have here now is piece A, which is the larger or bottom part of the drum. And then we have two pieces that are the same size in circumference, but one is a little bit thicker than the other. So um, piece B is the 3 seconds of an inch, and then piece C is 1 16th of an inch. And those two together will make up the right amount of thickness that I'll need for that part of the banjo. And then of course our neck will be piece D. So I'm going to go ahead and glue B and C together and then we'll file down the edges so that they're all smooth and the exact same size. I'm going to make sure I clamp that really well so that it dries nice and flat. I don't want any part warping or lifting. So for the skin on the top of the banjo, I've just decided to use some paper. So I found a piece of, not quite cream, but it is an off-white color, um, which I think is probably pretty close to the original color of that skin, um, or at least the aged original color of that skin. And so I'm just going to glue that onto the top of those two circles that we put together, and then I'll trim it off after I've attached it. So I'm going to, I think, just use plodge for that. Now I'm just going to cut that out. I'm going to paint the edges of the smaller piece to match the original colors on the banjo. For the larger piece, I'm going to paint the edges of it this nice soft yellow, and then I'm going to paint the top of it black. I've cut a very small piece of this adhesive foil for the top. I've cut out the center of that foil piece, which should make it easier for me to glue the other piece on top. As you can see on the original banjo, the middle piece had some shapes cut out of it. So I've gone in with my X-Acto knife and tried to replicate those holes, although they're not exactly the same shape. So much of this work had to be done under the magnifying glass. I'm going to go ahead and attach those two pieces together now. I'll be using this thin picture wire to create the metal bracket that fits over the head of the banjo. 
I'll start by wrapping it around the circle to get the shape and the size right. I'm going to hide where the wire is twisted together underneath the armrest on the side of that banjo. I'm putting a very thin line of this diamond glaze dimensional adhesive all the way around the outside edge of the head of the banjo and then I'll place the wire on top of that. Now I'll place the wire on top of that glue and you can always add a little bit more on top of that if you don't think that you have a really good hold. For those brackets that are on the sides, I'm adding some dimensional glue first, about a half an inch or 10 millimeters at a time, and then I'm just laying those small pieces into the glue. Don't worry if those pieces of wire are a little bit too long. You can always snip them off after the glue is dried. I'm going to carry on and add those little pieces of wire all the way around to the other side of the circle. Moving on to the neck, you will need pieces D, E, and F. You'll see I've also cut the headstock off of the neck for now. If you look at the picture, you'll see that it's actually tilts downwards, so I need to adjust it. So for now, I'm just going to put this piece to the side and we'll work on it a little bit later. You can see that the neck is quite thick at this end. So I'm adding those small pieces of wood to build the neck up. So I'm going to start with the bigger of those two pieces and I've tapered it off just a little bit just to shape it and it's going to glue to the underside of the neck and it's just going to be flush on the ends. And I'll just show you quick where that's going to sit on the banjo. I'll just give it a light sand here just to smooth out any rough edges. If you take that second smaller piece now, you can see that it actually attaches to the larger of those circles underneath those first two pieces. Before I attach that last tiny piece, I'm actually going to attach the neck to the head of the banjo first. Now I can go ahead and add that last tiny piece underneath the neck. As you can see, I've painted the fingerboard to match the original banjo. I'm just going to paint those little silver dots on with a toothpick and some silver paint.
Next I'm going to make the frets for the neck and I'm just going to use this same wire that I was using previously and the dimensional glue that I was using as well. I'm going to lay a fret everywhere that there's a color change along the neck. So just put a little bit of your diamond glaze onto the neck and then lay your frets across. Again, don't worry if they're a little bit too long. We can always cut them off later. I'll work on the tailpiece and the bridge next. And I'm just going to be making those out of cardstock. So I've taken two pieces of this beige cardstock and glued it together so that I have double thickness. And then I'm just going to cut out those shapes out of the cardstock. So the tailpiece is just a flat piece cut to that shape, but the bridge is a little bit different. I've glued one slightly smaller piece on top of the larger piece just to give it a three-dimensional look. I'm going back to the headstock now and I need to add the tuning pegs onto the headstock. So you can see in the picture that there's four tuning pegs there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill four very small holes in that headstock, just big enough for some stick pins to go through. For the bottom of the headstock, I was going to put these little wooden pieces underneath, but I found that they were just too long and bulky and just weren't the correct scale. So what I did was I used the pins for the top and then I just used the little round circles of the wood for the bottom. And I cut those little round circles just out of a round toothpick and they're probably a millimeter in width each. So this is after putting the pins into the top. Give yourself some grace here folks. It took me a really long time because those little pins are so tiny and so hard to hang on to that it took me a hot minute to get it to go into those holes. I ended up having to use my magnifying glass which is why I didn't film it. I also had to sand down the edge of that headstock so that it sat back a little bit from the neck of the banjo. I've glued the headstock back onto the neck now and I've added those four tiny little circles onto the bottom. It's time to attach the strings. I started by gluing four pieces of the wire to the tail piece and then I added another piece of cardboard on top of it just to add some extra strength. Once the glue was dry then I just wrapped it back up and started tucking it underneath those little slits at the top of the tail piece. I never did get those wires completely straight, but I got them pretty close and when I glued them in, it looked a little bit better than just leaving them loose. I also need to pull those wires up and wrap them around those tuning pegs, which I don't think it's going to be an easy feat. I'll go ahead and glue that tailpiece now onto the bottom of the banjo. Like I said, I never got them completely straight, but using that dimensional glue really helped. And again, I had to use the magnifying glass, so unfortunately I couldn't record that part. Last but not least is this armrest, and I'm going to make this out of cardstock as well. So I've got some gray cardstock, and I've just traced out the uh, shape of it onto the cardstock. And I'm going to cut slits into the outer edge or the larger edge that I can fold over and then use another piece of cardstock to cover that up.
Now I'm just going to fold those cut edges down at about a 90 degree angle. Now I've cut another really small strip of that gray paper and I'm just going to apply it onto the edge that I folded down. Well, I glued the armrest to the banjo and then I just went over it with a very light coat of silver paint just to give it a little bit more of a metallic look. So the banjo is now complete. Um, I had a lot of fun making this little banjo. This was my first ever musical instrument so I'm very pleased with how it turned out. I hope you liked the tutorial and thank you very much for joining me and if you haven't already done so please consider hitting the subscribe button and we will see you next time. Bye for now.